Hey guys, whilst I run up the stairs to show you what I'm going to be doing today, which is fixing, not fixing, but helping with potential damp issues with my little tapo device to then use it with my filtration system to hopefully make it a lot nicer in the house. Let's get to it. Now guys, let me just give you some context and the reason why we're doing this and what devices we will be using, etc. Now, this house that I'm in, I built with my partner, Steph. It's a five bedroom house and it, we renovated an old part of the building, which was 1823 when that was constructed. That didn't have any DPC layers. And then when also the second part, I've got a real itchy nose, the second part was built by the previous owner. And when they extended it, because it put two houses basically together, that DPC had failed as well. And the builder, well, he did it himself. Wasn't quite good, but anyway, moving on. Now, I have posted several videos on this channel regarding damp. When I first got it, when my video skills were worse than they are now, and also more lately ones of me doing it using the dry rod system and some tanking, etc. Now, I love the comments from people. I think they're fantastic. <coughs> Excuse me. People who don't think rising damp exists, problems, blah, 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 blah. They're just, it's just fantastic. And what they don't know is I'm a DIYer and I've done DIY stuff and it's worked what I've done. I've followed the instructions from these manufactured products and it's worked. I've renovated previous houses which have still got the dry rod system in it as we speak and a tanking layer, no problem at all. That, however, does now bring me on to my next plan of action regarding this house to get as much moisture out of it as possible without having loads of noisy applications and it'd be automated so it's easy. So therefore, I don't have to switch the switch on and off. I can see how much power it's using. I don't want it in the summer when the windows are open, but in the winter I want it on, blah, 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 blah. So I'm gonna talk you through what I've got. And there she is. That is a positive input ventilation system. I'm just gonna back up only because I was directly under it and it is on, as you can probably just see some wobbling cobwebs. And that is what we have got in the roof that's pushing air filtered through the roof into the building. And you can see maybe just behind there's a little wiggly black light and that is the heating element. So in the winter, it can heat the air up as well. So it's not pushing in freezing cold air. So what the device is there to do is to push fresh ventilated air into the building so that air is continually circling around. We don't have dead air basically. now. I've positioned this one right at the top of the stairs. The reason is we've got obviously the front door just at the bottom there, and we've got the open plan walkway through, walkway through, walkway. Where I've just been also building my underfloor heating manual cabinet here and here. So the air will always just keep pushing through, through there and it's got all this way to travel. And the reason we're using this is like I say, to push this air around and we're gonna get as much that dead air, that moisture air, push through little cracks, extractor fan gaps, gaps in the doors, anything like that is gonna be really pushed through. It's just to keep air flowing. Now, to make it better of what I've done, is you do get a plate that goes over it. Was a fly there? A plate that goes over it, which I'll be putting on in the finished thing to show you guys. But what I'm wanting to do at the same time is to monitor it of how much it's gonna cost, so winter versus summer, I don't probably reckon, even though it's on now, I'll be using it in the summer. Reasons is windows will be open, everything like that, so it'll be just pushed through. It's not loud, I will say it's not loud, but I don't know how it'll be in the night. So I don't maybe want it going in the night. I don't know, I'm waiting to find out. But what I do want to have it for is I want to have it to come on when the moisture in the building ramps up. And this is why we have got this cookie, which is the Tapo. I probably am saying that completely wrong, by the way, in terms of a brand. And I'm going to connect this device, which is monitoring my moisture in the building, 56% as we speak. And I'm going to be monitoring that with a couple of other sensors. They all work together to tell the plug when to switch on. That plug is now wired directly up into this ventilation system. So that when it gets too stuffy and everything like that, it comes on. So yeah. Let's crack on. I've got some fuses to change because one's got a real bright light, so it's all young, fuse spur. I've then got to put the socket up there and everything, run the plug to it, plug it all in, bish bash bosh. Let's see how we get on. Let's go. So this fuse spur here always has a red bright light when it's on, which is a bit annoying if you're in this bedroom, I will admit. 
So I need to swap this particular one out. But in order to do that, I need to turn the power off. And now I need to go get the fuse from my storage of sockets to make some changes up here so that then we won't have a nice bright light. And then I'm gonna have to go in the loft and make some changes again. This is where we carry a box of supplies. But I say that, it's just the advantage or not an advantage of doing your own properties. Perfect, that is exactly what I wanted. There we have it. You've just watched me change one socket, so I wasn't going to put you through more pain in doing the others, but I'm going to explain the system whilst I'm up here. So there it comes from the fuse spare. That goes into the socket. Then the device goes into the three-pin plug. That goes into the tapo plug itself, which can be switched on and off. There it all is. Nice and done. Now we come around here and try not to fall over. And this is it. It just hangs freely. I probably could do with washing the, uh, the covers. Just swap me to a wider lens. And yeah, this it, it just sits there hanging and it just drags in the air and it just pushes it through the ducting into there. You can tell I'm gonna put you right next to it. It's not loud. It's actually quite quiet up here to be honest with you. I think most of the sound might be coming from another motor that might be, oh, just falling down the ladder, might be further near the ducting in the, in the house. But yeah, that's the that's the device. Just needs a. I think I'm gonna give that a clean. Take those. I do know that you do have to clean these when it when it's on this head to me every year. Take it out, give it a clean and stuff. But it hasn't been running. But they're just I think a little bit dirty. So that should be done. Oh, there we go. Get down from there. Now what I'll put on screen now is just a screen grab of me showing you just how easy it is to connect the humidity sensor up to the. The smart plug which will obviously switch the device on and everything like that i can obviously do it automatically myself switch it on and off or i can do it automatically in terms of uh like putting on a timing schedule come on only between this time and this time but i wanted to connect it up to the humid sensor so yeah i've got a few of them around the house it can connect up to multiples and go into it i'm not going to go too much into into that particular thing because i'm going to probably do a video all about my smart system going around the house you know, I've built the network, I've got some clever stuff with automation with Develix Windows, which can tie into my humid sensors as well, so I can do loads of things. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Questions are welcome, criticism welcome, I enjoy it all. So thanks so much for it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out, bye.